Back to structure analysis and, and here, um, yeah, to really to, to structure analysis, which is just a part of the entire construction industry, what I want to talk to, uh, about today. So I'd li like to talk about how we at Sophistic, so we are software developer uh, for uh, structure engineering software, and how we see how structure analysis can be integrated into a BIM workflow and uh, what can be the benefits there and what, is, uh, yeah, what are the gains of doing that. So first of all, um, just some words about um, our company. Uh, Sophistic, we are, um, as said, we are uh, developing software for structure engineers. Um, and here, just three pictures highlighting the range of, 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 of buildings or of applications what we uh, support. So on the left-hand side, you see a um, high-rise high building or, or buildings in general. So the Lusai Katara Hotel was indeed one of the first um, projects where the customer tried to use um, Autodesk Revit as a platform, um, also for structure analysis. So it was about, I, I think, 12, 13 years ago. Uh, in the middle is something uh, is um, what we are um, really well known at our bridges. So you see here the, the third, uh, Bosporus Bridge, which has been opened a couple of years ago, um, where we were involved. And on the right hand side, uh, lightweight structures, stadiums, and and our membrane structures um, uh, are also um, a scope of our our uh, software. Yeah, but. Basically, so what is the challenge? What uh, we think and what I think uh, we as a structure engineer will face uh, in the future. So first of all, we, uh, I think we are uh, facing an increasing demand, an increasing demand of um, uh, engineering services. So the infrastructure, especially in Germany, is about 60 years old. So all the bridges, uh, the pre-stress bridges, need to be uh, reassessed. And uh, railway bridges are even older, so there's a lot of uh, infrastructure to be uh, renewed and uh, built again. And um, of course, you can see that I think uh, with the um, rising house prices, so the construction activity does not meet the market demand. So there is will be more. There need to be more houses built um, as they uh, are built right now. Then. Um, uh, increasing requirements, so the um, uh, quality of the construction services, I think, need to um, increase. So prices are rising, so it's not any longer possible to just to put a massive of steel and concrete onto the project, so you need to save material. And of course, all these discussions about reductions of carbon footprints and uh, energy consumption uh, definitely need more engineering uh, services for a specific pro uh, pro uh, pro uh, product or but on the other hand, um, uh, we will face a decreasing workforce. So you see on the uh, right hand side the uh, distribution of the population in Germany, and you can clearly see that this um, bulge of the people, the so-called baby boomers, are soon getting into retirement. So they are now 60 years old, and in, in a couple of year, years they will not any longer work um, um, anymore. And on the other hand, there are not any uh, these these uh, people which are uh, retiring are not being fulfilled uh, up with uh, young engineers. So and and by the way, on the on the plane here to Vilnius yesterday, I, I read on the newspaper an article article uh, that the structure the in, uh, the students starting on a structure engineer or the mathematics. Um, uh, study in Germany decreased in the last 10 years from 120,000 students to 90,000 students. So there is 25% uh, um, of less students um, starting engineering studies uh, than before. So, and this definitely uh, requires, I think, that, um, yeah, the structure engineering process alone, so not, not, not only the entire uh, uh, construction process, but only the, uh, just the structure engineering process needs to be much more automated than it is right now. So, but how does it look uh, like right now? So the current workflows are still uh, based on drawings. So um, let's consider only the structure engineering uh, workflow. So there is, um, the participants are, for example, there's the architect, there's the structure engineer in Germany, there's also a, a checking engineer involved, and uh, all the details. And uh, these, um, the transfer of information between these um, um, participants is 
mostly done on, on paper, or not only paper, PDF or files, but still in a, in a, in a, in, in, on drawings and not on, on real 3D models. Um, and furthermore, there is also, all of them are working on isolated models. So the structural engineer has his uh, software he likes, and he sets up an entire um, model from scratch. The architect has his model, and the checking engineer does the same. So they do not exchange models, they just exchange the drawings, and then they, they uh, build up their the systems. And you can imagine when something needs to be changed, um, the entire process needs to be done again. So what would be ideal, let's say? Um, so an ideal world uh, would use some kind of common data environment called, or uh, in other words, uh, to use a single source of truth. So to have some centralized data and all the participants just use a share of this data and have their specific views of these data. Of course, the reality is somewhere in between, and we need to, but I definitely think we need to uh, move into that direction. So you have some central model, and others uh, participate uh, with this model. Yeah, one of these, I would say, um, um, uh, common data environment which comes, or some products which come close to this um, is uh, Autodesk Revit, for example. Of course, there are others outside, but this is especially is something we at Sophistic are building on. There are also other workflows I uh, will quickly, uh, I will briefly describe later on. But uh, this is one of the platforms what we um, um, see people are using, and it provides some of these features. So it provides the features that that structure engineers or architects and also MEP and uh, different domains can work together on this single model and can, um, yeah, enrich uh, the common database. And we as Sophistic, we are providing add-ons uh, for modeling and analysis based on this uh, platform. So you can see here, for example, on the, on the left, there is the architectural model of a building and um, Revit provides features and uh, we are um, adding also features to automatically create an analysis model uh, from this and then you can start your doing your analysis uh, and um, your um, checking of the structure based on that 3D model. But what is the challenge here? So one of the challenge is the transfer of the models. So basically these domains um, you cannot just use a 3D model uh, and, and do an analysis on it. So there are different kind of uh, needs, different level of details, and of all, also different kind of uh, geometry types being used here. So for example, on the left-hand side, this architectural model um, is, um, has a high fidelity, there is uh, much detail in it, um, but maybe the accuracy of the model is not that big because it's just needed for visualization or for coordination, but you cannot use it for, for analysis. Then there might be a structure model which is used uh, for um, creating formwork drawings, for example, um, which um, is a subset uh, of the architectural model. And then for the analysis itself, you need an analytical model. So you need uh, reduced element, you need dimensionally reduced elements. So a beam is described as a line element, a, um, a slab or a wall is described as a surface element. And then there's also from this, um, there needs to be a process uh, that you can um, do the finite element analysis, you need to create a finite element. So you break it down to finite elements to do analysis there. And this is kind of a challenge, and, and this is um, still, I think, not, not fully solved, but we at Sophistic, we want to uh, provide tools to solve this, uh, this workflow from this initial model which you, uh, using model simplification, then uh, from the structure model to the analytical model, that, that, that dimensional reduction. We want to provide tools to um, create that uh, uh, automatically, and then also meshing is something we already provide, and, and, and it is uh, more or less solved. So what I, and this is some, I, something uh, in the center, you see that uh, transfer from the structure model to the analytical model is something I want to um, show you right now what we do at Sophistic um, in our um, development departments, what we are working on. So um, this is one of the tools, and I'm, I'm not sure so whoever worked with uh, Revit um, and used the analytical model there, who uh, uh, already knows that there is a lot of work involved. <laughs> yeah, I know some one of, uh, of you already doing that. 
and there's a lot of uh, work involved uh, to correct and clean up uh, this, this analytical uh, model. So usually this workflow, when you get hand over, handed over the, the model from an architect, that takes days or hours or even days uh, to clean up the model. And when something um, uh, changes, you need to do that process again. And we are um, working on tools, and we are already um, about to release that kind of tools, which allows to correct and generate a correct analytical model out of this volumetric, uh, volumetric um, structural model. So this means a tedious task, which, is not, uh, uh, which took hours or days, uh, has been reduced to minutes. And also, what is also a benefit, that um, there is no knowledge of Revit or detailed knowledge of an analytical model in Revit needed for the analytical, uh, for the structural engineer to perform that task. So I let just this video, I start that video here. So this shows a pro, uh, process on a, on, a, um, on a little bit artificial building, but you can see here already these are these kind of situations a uh, structural engineer will face when he works, uh, uh, when he tries to create an analytical model from a physical model. So you see the physical members and you see the analytical members. So, and the analytical members, the edges and the lines of these analytical members do usually not match properly. So you need to correct them in order to get, to, uh, to get an analytical a clean system, a mechanical clean system. And this uh, feature, for example, solves that. So this is, we are using intelligent algorithms, optimization algorithms, algorithms uh, also based on machine learning to create that um, system. And in the end, so after updating this analytical model, you will see that now these issues have, to, have been solved. So for example, here you see they are not matching, and after changing, after uh, running the algorithm, it, it, they are matched. And yeah, so as I said, those who are really that did that job, they know that is a really complicated job. So because if you change something here, it might affect the, the, the model here. So there is a, it is a global problem, which needs to be solved globally. But, as a, but, but if you do that manually, you always end up with these this, this, uh, loops of dependencies. Um, uh, arising here. So, yeah, just wanted to show you here what we are working on to allow to enable that process from initial model to the analytical model. So, our goal is to provide tools that this is not any longer uh, that this is not any longer necessary to let's say um, build models in parallel. So that we provide tools to do that, and also tools to um, we are also want to give or we are giving tools at hand of the engineer that he can decide what is being transferred. He can also decide how the elements are being aligned. So this is uh, also, um, I, can, I don't want to go in detail here right now, but um, we definitely want to, to keep the engineer uh, being an, at, at, the, at the steering wheel, of course. Yeah, so one might ask, yeah, why should I have that model in within that 3D BIM model? So I can still, why, why shouldn't I use my, my favorite finite element analysis program and do it uh, there? So two examples uh, showing what we see as, uh, as the benefits. Um, or one major example is, we see a benefit is if you have the data back in your uh, 3D model. So. Right now, if you have that classical process, you have a program here, you have a program here, and in the end you have some, some files or you have some data which is in some folder and you cannot, any, it's very difficult to refer back some results to the initial model. So that a, a column might be subdivided multiple times and it has a totally different name. Uh, so there is no way, uh, it, it is error prone. So you, there are a lot of errors, so just to get that information back. If that um, process is better streamlined, and of course under the hood we are taking care of GUIDs so that elements are, can be referred back, we can bring back information again in the, in the 3D BIM system. So for example, one example is here, we can uh, visualize um, the columns here you, on, on the right hand side you see a 3D model or even you, like we can print the schedule uh, of the columns. So this gives the engineer the ability 
to uh, visually check the results. And in this case, we are printing here colorized uh, utilization factor, for example. So red means high utilization factor, yellow means, yeah, it's okay. Green means the column is okay. And with something changes, so the architect modifies something, or the structural engineers, of course, can also modify the, the model. You just run the process and you get a different colorized result and you can judge your, your uh, results here. Or on the other hand side, we are also bringing back information uh, like uh, reinforcement, required reinforcement uh, into the 3D BIM model. And what you can see here is the uh, required reinforcement which exceeds a certain base reinforcement in red, for example. So and if you have it there and not on a drawing, uh, you can, the, a drafter or, uh, can already pick that and can draw his uh, reinforcement uh, layout based on that information. And later on, if uh, he wants to check, he can, uh, again, read in that information and, 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 and use that. Yeah, so just wanted to highlight one of the benefits of integrating structure analysis into uh, such kind of a BIM process or the BIM product. And um, I, I see or we see four um, benefits of that. So one is, of course, efficiency. So you, you avoid a redundant input of separate models. So if you have an automatic, more automated process, uh, you don't have to always uh, set up your separate model. And of course, this also um, um, leads to less manual work when something changes. Consistency. So as you have seen, you can check your um, analytical model always in terms of the physical model. So you instantly see if something does not match. So if you have it again in different programs, that is difficult. Of course, you can use coordination software um, uh, and, and, and do that, but uh, it's similar, but uh, you definitely are much more consistent. And I already um, explained that. Um, so we call it uh, insights, so you can assess your results in the context of the, uh, of the 3D model. And uh, you can also, um, and um, for example, using some programming, using Dynamo, you can combine this information and derive new information from it. So there might be some information coming from the contractor or from the architect on the, on the columns, and you can combine that and derive your own decision variables or whatever you want to do with that uh, data. So you can, can uh, yeah, combine and increase and, 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 and create new data from it. Yeah, and you can cooperate. So um, a BIM platform or any platform as well, they allow that people can work together on a shared model and uh, you can share uh, information with uh, colleagues in the, in the same domain or you can also share information with other domains as well. Yeah, so this was one example we are, um, are working on in Sophistic, uh, or I wanted to highlight this uh, on, on, on basis of the platform Autodesk Revit, but in generally we are uh, targeting a more open BIM uh, workflow because it's definitely not, um, not the case that there is just one single platform, and we, we, I think we saw that in, on many presentations today. You always have to combine a lot of different um, programs and tools uh, in order to get the workflow running. I'm not sure if this is good. Uh, in other um, uh, industry domains, one, the main contractor or the company just describes what kind of software need, uh, needs to be used. But anyhow, so this is the case in construction industry. And um, we want to connect us with other um, um, processes here. So you saw already here we are connecting with Revit, but we also do have connections to workflows based on Rhino and Grasshopper, where also uh, connections to Tecla are, are, are there. Or also uh, very interesting is on the left-hand side here called SAF new file formats in Germany uh, used to exchange data. So we are working on exchanging data with other software uh, vendors like uh, Globals, Kia, and also EDA Statica, for example. So there are a um, couple of, um, I would say, um, yeah, initiatives underway to allow a more integrated approach uh, throughout the structure engineering uh, process. Yeah, so I'm already at the end. So, so just summing up. Um, I definitely believe that, that the BIM integrated workflow uh, if, um, increases the eff efficiency of, uh, and, and also the quality, which is definitely needed, of the structure engineering work. So 
uh, just in short, you get higher quality results for lower costs. And um, those users, and you see on the right-hand side uh, some of the um, um, user reports, you will find those on our web page. So some, um, there are already users who, who are going to switch in, onto this uh, kind of workflows. So there are reports uh, telling you about that. And uh, they are reporting up to 80% time savings if you want to have that model and, and you can, can just derive your analysis there. But nevertheless, so we definitely face that, I would say that, um, yeah, um, um, that the change is not that happening uh, that fast as we expect it should fast or as we expect it would uh, change. Um, not sure, but uh, I think we, uh, we already saw it before. So um, this, this uh, innovation cycle, people are happy with what they have and do, they do not have the time and do not see the that value to change into that other workflows, but yeah, it's up to you to change that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andreas. Um, I've seen that uh, when uh, when you mentioned that Sophistic could be used as an add-on in, in, in Revit, uh, uh, for the analysis, uh, some of our colleagues put notes on their smartphones, so it seems that your presentation is really, you know, tangible and you're proposing real stuff which could transform our, you know, everyday life. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you.